Well, hi, I'm Jason English, or JE, at Director at Intellix, analyst firm dedicated to digital transformation. We're currently working on our Zoho Advanced Development Series, and part of that, I'm glad to have on Clarence Rosario from Zoho. Clarence, why don't you tell us a little bit about your role at Zoho and what you're doing with analytics? Yeah, good morning, Jason. So thanks for having me on this interview. So I, I've been with Zoho for the last 25 years and I had the business intelligence product line. So taking care of the entire product suite. So that's what I do. And currently we are working on a new launch of this, of the BA product, Zoho Analytics. So it keeps me busy and exciting time. <laughs> oh yeah. I guess we could start off with just basically the evolution of the analytics space. I mean, it's obviously as a, as a trend, it's been around for a long time since the early days of business intelligence and things, but in your opinion, how has the analytics space evolved? You know, what are some of the new companies challenges, new challenges that companies face today, you know, for improved visibility or decision support help? Okay. So maybe I'll just start with a small historical context of how the, this, in this whole space evolved, right? So the last 20, 25 years, right? So the, the first 1.0 version of, of the BI, right, was typically a, a simple reporting tools used along with spreadsheets and some kind of database querying and things like that. Very non-interactive, done by some developers, right, based on requirements, right? So that's how it started the, the 1.0 version, right? And that's what we call right, version 1. And then the big enterprise BI vendors came into space, like the, the likes of SAP and, and business objects and Cognos, quite a lot of vendors who came in and then said that for all the enterprise data that is getting collected, so we need to have a very sophisticated reporting tool. They call it as reporting. And the, coin, the word business intelligence also was coined at that time, right? Because it was giving intelligence on the business data that was collected. Right. So, but still it was more developer friendly or IT friendly because you need to know coding. You need to know how to write SQL queries, the database dialect, right? SQLs. So even if an executive wants a report, they have to get connected with the IT persons to create the reports and then start consuming, right? So it's when the, the creator were the ITs and the consumers were the executives or business users, right? So, so the, but the relevant, it, it was specifically focused on the enterprise business applications, right? That's the, that's a core target of the particular product line at this at the time, right? And then in the uh, uh, early part of 2000, right, the 3.0 version came where the idea was to really democratize access to insights, okay? Make insights accessible to everyone, right? So the new paradigm of self-series BA tools came into picture, right? The, the, the focus was to really enable any business users to really start analyzing data through easy to use tools so that they can get insights because insights can be a great enabler for all type of business users, not just the executives alone, right? And that's when the tools like Zoho Analytics, what we do, right? And when the Tableau and, um, and others came into being, right? So we launched our product in 2009, late in 2009, right? So that's a 3.0 version and it's been there almost 15 years now, right? So now we are in yeah. 2024, right? So I would call the, the new generation is basically the AI powered BI tools or analytics tool. That's what the trend is. It is all about trying to infuse AI into the BI spectrum because Naturally, A plays a significant role in BI because BA is a place where data gets accumulated, right, from variety of applications and, and data sources, right? So naturally, when the data is huge, uh, A can play a significant role because it can have uh, quite a lot of uh, data to crunch to come up with models and analyze them and give insights, right? So the, four dot, the version 4 of the BA analytics space is something of adopting AI in a such a way that it can deliver powerful insights on one side, the other is also to accelerate adoption of BA further inside the enterprises or organizations, right? So that's what is happening today. That's what is that is what is what is the trend now. And that's what most of the BA vendors, including Zoho, is trying to achieve in this new era of analytics and BA tools, yeah? Yeah, it's interesting. We've seen, yeah, we've really seen analytics go from this kind of bottom-up approach where you had upper management basically telling underlings, you know, give me some reports, right? Give me, generate me some reports from this tool. And it's, it's completely switched over on its head where basically at the root level where people are actually doing line of business work, they're looking to analytics to, to find out what should I do next, right? What can I do to, to help forward the goals of the company and to try to have that, that effort aligned with, you know, what's actually happening at the management level. So yeah, we've definitely seen 
the space turned on its head in the last 10 years. And it's great to see this trend. So, you know, I know part of your part of your slogan is basically, I mean, you have CRM for all and you have other aspects of your suite, but what is what is analytics for all mean to Zoho and, and how has your approach to analytics changed in the last few years? See, when we started on this particular product line, right, our focus is to really deliver a self-service analytics platform, right, where it will be an enabler for all types of business users, not just the executives or not the IT guys alone, right? So our mantra had been to really offer analytics as a key enabler for all types of business users. And that's why we call it as analytics for all, right? Right from the front end users to the executives, they, everyone should have access to insights, right? And how can we build tools and capability that will make it happen, right? So that's why we term ourselves as a platform, which is providing analytics for all types of business users. That's one dimension. The other dimension, when you get into the enterprises, right, especially the BA uh, personas, uh, data personas, right? So we also wanted to give a platform so that uh, all types of data personas will also be in a position to use the platform for getting insights, be it your data engineers who are trying to get data, analyze, set up data models, right? Or the business analysts or data analysts who analyze data or data scientists and data scientists who try to build more ML models, right? On the platform for specific analytics workload, right? So even that segment of the audience should also get addressed by the platform offering an extensibility capability that we offer, right? So there are two dimensions here, all types of business uses and all types of data personas should be addressed by the platform, right? In such a way that they feel empowered to get insights faster. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely like, there's a, any business user mode and there's kind of an expert mode too, where you know, if somebody is familiar, if they want to use Python or write their own queries, they can still do that, or they can have the you know, analytics tools, you know, with AI helping them kind of extend the existing sets of queries and, and iterate on those, or or maybe pull things to de- together in a way that they used to have to, uh, you know, make all these custom joins and things that just aren't aren't necessary to. It's just toil, right? It, it doesn't really add any value to the analytics process. I would say. Yeah, that's part of the process to get insights, right? So, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Zoho already has a great reputation for helping startups really get, you know, to go from startup into a larger size company because if they they can kind of build their business around the whole suite of tools. But you obviously are starting to have a lot of different types of customers. Maybe some who come in, you know, the mid to large size companies that might already be, you know, running at a billion or two billion dollars, and and maybe have a lot of different analytics packages that are already in place. They already have existing core systems. They probably have, you know, SAP in place or some Oracle systems, and they probably have Tableau or some other re- reporting tools and, and all these things. So, you know, how can, how can Zoho help those customers? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. So actually what we today offer, right. As a, as a, as a Zoho Analytics BA platform, right. It's an end-to-end BA platform that addresses all the business, uh, all workflows with respect to BI, right. Be it the data integration where you try to integrate data from variety of sources, the data management and preparation area, which helps people to prepare high quality data, right. Then in terms of analysis, right, where you can help people to analyze and come up with reports, dashboards and KPIs, right. And also look at even collaboration and, and access control, right? So the entire spectrum of what you try to do is with respect to a BA workflow is covered as part of the platform, right? So we are an end-to-end BA platform, right? And we are also introducing a data science block today in the, the new version that is coming up uh, this month, right? Which will help even data analysts to build ML models for their analytics workload right inside the single platform, right? So it's an, it's an end-to-end integrated BA platform. So that's a great enabler, right? Offered in multiple deployment models, right? Be it in the cloud or on-premise or private Cloud. So with all this kind of flexibilities, it is offered, right? So if if uh, you, if you look at uh, in today's enterprise, right? So they do deploy multiple BA tools. They do deploy multiple data tools, right? So the vendors that they try to use typically have a kind of a siloed approach. They might be strong in visualization. They may be strong in data management. They may be strong in data science, right? So a typical enterprise try to pick and choose the strong vendors in each one of the areas, right? But that adds up to the complexity because of the fact that you have to manage multiple tools and to really get that entire workflow done and get the insights as an outcome, right? So that always adds a complexity, right? Although initially it might be a great enabler, but over time, in terms of cost, 
in terms of complexity in terms of uh, maintaining the system over time right becomes really a, a great burden right so that's why our approach is we want to have the notion of self service because always cemented we want to really make it easy for people to adopt at the same time offer a very comprehensive ba platform so that the complexity can be solved because it's easy to use and the other thing is they don't have to pick and choose multiple vendors for different different functionality in a, in the ba workflow right they can use a right so that's a unique differentiator the ease of use being a self service ba plan and a end to end ba platform so that is one way by which we try to position within the enterprises who are already been using multiple tools but they are really burdened by complexity burdened by the by the cost in terms of managing and also by the cost they are trying to pay to the vendors because over time they keep paying more and more right so that is one key way by which we try to get get showcase our differentiation into the enterprises who are already into bi that's one thing the other dimension is if you look at our platform although i say it's an end to end bi plan it's also a composable platform right it has different building blocks right offered as an integrated platform as well as as a separate component if you want to consume them as separate unit right so some of the independent components that we offer which makes us makes this entire bi platform includes the data preparation and management block which helps you to get data prepare what i mean is cleanse the data okay transform the data enrich the data so that you can have high quality data that you can set up right that preparation component alone can be consumed if you want if you have a requirement where you want a tool or a product to really get high quality data from the data that sources that you might have right for example you might have data that is coming from your erp system that may be coming from a crm system you want to really but they might have quality issues they have to undergo some transformation and enrichment right so you need a very strong data preparation component right so you can also use this component the data preparation component that is offered as part of the ba platform to do this job and then push the data the out the outcome the data that is coming out of the system into your into your operation system like a database or a data warehouse or it could be going back to your erp systems erp or crm system so we can use this component as an independent uh, service to really pull in data prepare enrich transform and push it back to your operation system that could be your your erp crms and well as uh, database so that's an one another way by which you, they they can start consuming mm-hmm. or are start using zone the other composable component is what we call as embedded bi right so if you look at enterprises right typically they have quite a lot of custom application they build right and they want analytics as part of their application right for that uh, they cannot go and invest on writing the entire stack of analytics or implementing the entire stack of analytics to really power insights in the custom application they may be doing. they may be building a small inventory application they might be building a kind of a order tracking application that is there, there is quite a lot of application that they could right so what we also offer is what we call as embedded bi component right where the entire power of the bi platform can be taken rebranded and integrated as part of your custom application right to drive or deliver insights in the context of the application workflow so that's another component that we offer so on one side we have for a very end to end ba platform which is very easy to use right which covers the entire power of whatever that you need as part of the ba platform and on the other dimension we also have composable components or lego blocks that you can take up and independently use it for different functional requirements right so that is how we are trying to be an enabler for enterprises who are already into the bi or who might be already using multiple bi tools but still mm-hmm. they have the gaps yeah. they have the gap yeah that's that's a good thing to be able i mean i think a lot of existing packages that have been out there they tend to it's almost like they want to brand the experience um and that kind of creates a little bit of a problem as far as adoption because i mean really you want that you want the whole process to seem like your own right especially if you're offering it to your customers you know you'd want that experience to seem very seamless so that it's your it you know the end customer is the one offering that value to their customers if that's what they want you know interesting interesting part because you you've mentioned ai a few times so how is it really infused into the suite and, and do do the analytics analytics users know that they're using ai or, or or how do they at what touch points is is ai coming into play actually our objective uh, since uh, we started um, integrating ai into our ba platform has been that 
we want to take the power and complexity of ai right and then blend it as part of the ba product that we are offering the pre a platform that we offer so that the end users are not bogged down by the complexity but they get the the essence, the entire power and benefit of ai in a seamless way right we don't want to push down the complexity of ai to our end users right they want to they we want to just get the benefit out of it right that's what have our objective has been right so what we that's that's our approach because as i mentioned right we are a self service ba platform right and our key differentiation is ease of use right uh, and we want everyone to adopt the ba platform this is this is a kind of a base vision that we always uh, align ourselves right so what we did was or what we continue to do is adopt ai across the entire spectrum of all the components inside the ba platform in such a way that it powers the functionality and makes it easy for people to adopt it right so that could be in the data preparation layer for example when you are bringing data right and you want to cleanse the data right so can i use ai to make you do the job much easier okay by something like a ai assistant where you can say fix all the quality issues on my email columns remove all the duplicates it could be a small command that you make but it can understand what you are asking and then go and automate the entire job and fix the issues that are there in a email column right so that's an infusion of ai assistant to make it happen right the other thing is uh, when you start analyzing data right can i have an ai bot to keep asking questions so they show me the sales trend in the, for the last 24 months it might be a question that you're asking right and it will understand your question and give you a nice chart which will show you the sales across all the last 24 months is a nice line graph right so these are this this is a component we call as ask zia ask is basically asking questions to our zoho intelligent assistant zia is zoho intelligent assistant right so it's a a component or what we say a assistant embedded across the multiple workflows of bi right right in the data integration layer or the visualization analysis layer you can use ask zia to ask questions and get insights that's one aspect the other aspect is if you look at if you are looking at a chart right if you are looking at a chart or a report or a dashboard you would like to get the top insights of the report if there is that the, that the report is trying to convey to you right but that might take some time you have to keep analyzing the chart or a report and then say okay this is up for trend this is the downward trend these are the changes this is the percentage of change all these things need some analysis you have to put down the pen and paper to come up with the insight that is that the chart is trying to convey you right so to make the job easier right we are using ai that where we are using natural language generation where looking at the chart looking at the data we will try to bubble up the top insights that you might be interested to know from the report right so that it makes easy for it makes it easy for you to get the insights that you are required immediately or easily right so and how do we do that we analyze the entire data look at the trends inside the chart or a report and then say these are the top things that you might be interested this is the percentage of change between the last month and this month it is not directly shown in the chart but this is something that you might be interested to know right as a nice narration in in an english like format right so it's like it be a simple verbose you can go through it and you will get to the know the insight that is that is there behind the chart right so that's also an ai model at the back end it's called natural language generation it's a kind of a generative ai component where it is generating content right what i talked about is the previous case is basically ask zia which is once again a generative content where you are asking questions and in getting insights like similar to a chat gpt yeah. you are asking and getting insights as answer the second thing what i'm talking about is the narration engine where you are saying i give you a chart give me a nice summary of the top insights mm-hmm. something like you give a big paragraph text to chat gpt and say give me a summary of the document right yeah is is similar to it's another way of trying to use generative ai in the context of, of the ba platform right so so the way we are trying to do is adopt ai especially generative ai and the latest one latest ai capabilities in such a way that it will empower users to make decisions faster right so our our goal is to really accelerate adoption of analytics using ai that's that's our goal that's the way we are blending that is one side of it the other side is is also basically apart from trying to give you a generative ai capability right we also give you pre packaged ml models like for example you might want to do prediction right you might want to do sentiment analysis of your data so can i give you pre packaged ml models that are available so that you don't have to write the models for yourself 
right? So that you can do a predictive forecasting, or you may do a uh, anomaly detection on the data that is there. We have to find out outliers from the data that is coming up. So there are quite a lot of pre-packaged ML models that we, that we try to give it to the users, so that they don't have to worry about writing a model to really do a prediction, to do an anomaly detection of the data. So these are this is another dimension by which we make it easy, right? So this is all about making it easy for people to use insights or do analysis through the pre-packaged generative AI components or ML models that we offer. That is one dimension. The other dimension, there will be always pro developers who will say, okay, you give all the things, but we are not sufficient. I want to write my own ML models. I want to write my own <laughs> AI code, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm a, I'm a hands-on guy. So I, I, I have special requirements, which is not solved by the BA platform directly, right? So we also give a kind of pro developer friendly studios inside the product so that they can build their own ML models right inside the platform without trying to buy another tool or use another component to really do that ML models which are specific to their, for their enterprise requirements, right? So there are two dimensions. One On one side, we predominantly focus on bringing AI, especially generative AI and other AI models into the platform to make easy, make it easy for the users to adopt our BA platform. On the other side, we also enable um, users to really build custom ML models through a pro code, pro developer friendly models so that even if the platform does not address all your requirements pre-built, you can still extend the platform and get your requirements solved through AI. So these are right. two ways. Yeah, so there's a probably a much smaller set of use cases out there that people would need to customize just for a specific business when most of the most of the pages in the playbook for analysis are pretty much are pretty well known now like there's a lot of different types of standard reports and then uh, what's hard what becomes harder there is maintaining the context of a report as it evolves right so that if i'm asking a, if i'm asking a, um, an ai a question about you know could you help me generate this report then you want to drill into the details of it and you want you want to do refinement you don't want each one of these queries to be a separate uh, workflow, right? Because then you basically lose context of what you're trying to explore. And that's, but that's kind of what's, what I think is very powerful about the AI model associated with analytics is that you can kind of get this context that continues forward as you do your analysis and you help, it helps you make decisions because it's kind of maintaining that, that context. And you can always return to the workflow again later, um, or, or tell it to start over if you're, if you're not heading down the right path, but um, it's it's an interesting uh, capability that's that's kind of baked into your platform, I'd say. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how how do, um, in your experience, how have customers dealt with this this huge incoming wave of all, all analytics data metrics? You know, both from IT and from the business side that are just kind of washing over them. I mean, there's there's definitely a volume problem and a and a signal to noise ratio problem. So how are you? helping customers out there deal with this this high volume and, and like seemingly you know stochastic randomness that that happens when you look at so much incoming data see there is there is a data data velocity and diversity problem right because uh, mm -hmm. there is data that has been generated or collected by businesses today is almost doubling every year right we see it as an important challenge being a vendor observing how customers are uh, facing challenges okay so what data diversity and data velocity is an important problem right so when you talk about uh, diversity the the variety of business applications from which data is generated is is increasing right uh, by one count they say uh, a particular organization uses anywhere between 50 to 100 business applications um, to really run their operations right so that keeps collecting data right that and, and that keeps collecting and not only business applications but also machines generate data Okay, then the variety of data also includes not only structured data, you'd have so unstructured data, you have stream data, you have your video content, there are quite a lot of input that is coming into the businesses, right? So there's a velocity problem, there's a diversity problem, right? So how are you trying to help them, right? How as a, as a product vendor, what, what, what has been our take, right? So one thing that we try to do is really strengthen our data integration layer, right? Because at the end of it, the BA platform should be in a position to consume the data that has been thrown at it, right? And that means like it is, it is, it has to have for a variety of sources from which it can get data from, right? Be it from your databases, be it from your data lakes, be it from your business applications, right? Be it from your files and feeds, right? 
it should be in a position to get data from a variety of sources so we are, we have a very comprehensive data integration which offers uh, connect us to a variety of data sets be it your databases data lakes business applications and, lo and lots more right so more than 500 different endpoints from which you can get data immediately without doing any much of work so you connect to it it will start consuming the data so that's one thing the second thing is in terms of if you look at business applications like the like the ERPs like NetSuite or Salesforce or Zendesk uh, and quite a lot of popular business applications, right? So we not only help people to get data, right? We also help them to model the data automatically because when you get the data, if you start, if you want to really analyze the data and get to insights, right? You have to properly structure the data that has been fetched from the systems, right? So we go deeper. So we not only as a BA vendor help people to, which is what most of the vendors do, right? They give connectivity, but they stop with that, right? You have to do the modeling. You have to really structure the data in a logical way, right? That's a, that's a complicated job. So we, what we try to do is when you bring a data from something like Salesforce or NetSuite, right? We get data, we automatically model them. And, and not really stop with that, right? We also give you pre-packaged reports and dashboards for that particular departmental vertical. For example, let's say you're bringing it from Salesforce, right? I will give you, as soon as you integrate with data, I will give you hundreds of reports and dashboards for sales analytics, right? So that you can jumpstart yourself in terms of analyzing the data immediately without knowing, without worrying about what should what metric should I start looking at? How right. can I report the report? Then like what dashboard should I create? So we enable them, like we enable them. So, and then the next thing what we need to do is let's assume that you are bringing data from two different applications. You're bringing a sales data from your Salesforce CRM and your um, help desk ticketing system data from your Zendesk system. These are two different applications, right? Coming from two different vendors, right? So it means it adds another level of complexity. So you have to bring data, right? But you have to know how these two data connect to each, each other or talk to each other because these are two different applications, two different models, right? So what we do as a vendor, right? Given that we are we we in Zoho build quite a lot of business applications, we understand the models. We understand how multiple applications talk with each other in terms of the model layer, right? So what we try to do is we do the plumbing automatically. We do the connectivity between the Salesforce data and the Zendesk data automatically. We call them data blending, blending of data. Thereby, what happens is because of the fact that we do try to do this kind of smart blending without the users having to worry about that. You can create a simple report where you can look at a nice graph where, where you want to plot the number or the amount of revenue that you are making from a single account along with the number of tickets that the particular account has raised to you, right? In a single chart where across months, right? Where the amount of revenue that is, uh, the, the revenue data is coming from Salesforce, whereas the help desk uh, ticketing system information is coming from Zendesk, blended together seen in a single chart right so this is a simple example right so that is the level of depth that we need to do and to help people to get into and business insights automatically right so that's how we try to help businesses right who are getting data from business applications on one side we give you connectivity the other side when you're getting data from business application we go deep and we call this as basically a unified business analytics because you we unify data and also help people to get a unified understanding of how the data is really playing across and, and get them the perspective in terms of end-to-end -end business insights, right? As soon as the data comes in the system. So that is the other way we try by, by, by which we try to help people to manage the data, right? And the third dimension is in case, in case we don't help you with the, all the connectivity options or go deeper, right? We also help them to build their own connectivity options easily, right? With with a no code wizards where we, the people need not have to write code. They can use a small kind of a no code assistant to even build a custom data connectivity option to bring data from their data source. That could be your, your drives, it could be your database or it could be your applications. So in an easy way, they can try to bring in data and as soon as the data comes in, right, as I mentioned already, we have that modeling capability automatically. We have the blending capability automatically so that users need not have to worry about, okay, how to really model them, how to really blend the data and how to really analyze data. So it will be assisted as you are trying to bring your, even your custom data source, right? So that's the level of, what do you say, simplest uh, sophistication which is brought into the platform so that people can manage the complexity in terms of not only the diversity of data, 
but also the volume of data that is being processed, right? A, a, a small point to add, right? With respect to the data velocity, right? We have also built a very deep data warehousing engine as part of the platform, right? Mm. It means it can process and store huge amount of data in, in the in the order of billions and terabits of data, right? And so that's a that's a component that is inbuilt as part of the platform. Right. So even if you try to push billions of records to the system or in terms of terabits and petabits of data, you can still crunch the data and help you to analyze that. Right. Mm. So um, to really manage the huge volume of data that is gets generated. Right? So that's yeah. how uh, be an enabler to solve this complexity. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cool to have uh, so much integration capability, but you also have the you know complex back end to, to kind of handle the handle the heavy load part of it if if needed. So Clarence, how can customers take advantage of Zoho Analytics or the new Zoho Analytics? How do they get it and activate some of these capabilities? Yeah. Actually the Zoho, Zoho Analytics can be accessed from our website zoho.com slash analytics. That's our website, right? So they can go there and then start sign up there if they want to use the cloud version of the product, the hosted cloud version of the product. They can sign up and uh, start uh, with a free trial for 15 days uh, immediately, okay? To try out all the capabilities that I talked about. It's a single platform, so we don't restrict people to try out, right? And even if they want to have an extension uh, in terms of why uh, they want to evaluate for one month or two months, right? We always give a free extension uh, for people to play around the product, right? So that's how they can get started. And uh, if they want the on-premise or, 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 or private cloud deployment, they can also download the product because there we give multiple distributions. If you want to use the Zoho's cloud, you can sign up, start using it. If you want a, an on-premise edition, you can always download. And that again gives you a, a free trial for you to keep trying out the product, right? And both these um, uh, distributions are, are, are equivalent because all the capabilities that you see in the cloud will also is also available on-premise. There is no disparity between the capabilities, right? So that's one thing. And that apart, uh, we also give you a always free edition, right? Because uh, there's a limited free edition, which you can always use. It's a freemium model. Which if you can always try the product any for any time longer. And if you want to upgrade to a paid edition anytime, you can also do that. So that's, that's an ease by which people can play around, right? So that's about how people can try it out. And the new version that I've talked about, especially the, uh, the, the big launch that we are making as part of this 2024 release, right? Uh, it's getting launched next week on September 12th, right? Which will be available across all, all regions in the cloud, right? On September 12th. And follow that up, followed up, we will also have an on-premise edition by October end with its new capabilities, okay, available. So they can get started. And the new version is available as a beta. So in case you want to try a beta version of the new capabilities, it is available right now. Okay, as you get inside the product, you can try the beta of the new versions in case you want to try out the new capabilities that are coming up uh, as part of the, the new version. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Clarence. Yeah, it sounds like once again, Zoho makes it easy to, to get access to some really advanced functionality here. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been very great talking to you. Clarence, and I invite anybody to go check out the you know Zoho Analytics website there, just zoho.com slash analytics, right? You know, download it, try the demo. It's uh, it's free to do. And if you're an existing customer of Zoho One Suite, you know, you'll also probably see that module in there, like as we speak. So sounds great. Well, thanks for joining me, everybody, and it's been great to have another Zoho Development Stories Intellix video with you. So take care, and I'll I'll see you later. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for having me on the call. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right.